Hi guys, Alan Barrett here from Pull the Pin, and this is part two of our episode with Staz from Through Dark. Enjoy. Yeah, so we're good. We're cracking on, um, and then we are. Uh, Selection is kind of done at this stage. There's some other bits and pieces. Get badged. Uh, go to pool. Uh, join my squadron. And then it's, again, snakes and ladders, fucking that past selection on I'm, I'm nails, and then it's fucking <laughs> new blokes, bro, get in here. Oh, fuck. Starting again. And, you know, you're the new guy now in a Sabre squadron. It's fucking big boys. It's hair and beards, though. You know, it's looking <laughs> cool, getting all the cool equipment. The, you know, it's the new bloke. Excuse me, excuse me. How do I put the fucking idiot? Get over here. So you go through all that stage, and uh, I try and rattle through fucking 10 years' worth of, of selection there. But it, uh, sorry, of of service but you know generally speaking sort of a few tours of, oh, of, of, the, usual, of the usual it's spots and a, a lot of close shaves you know being blown up in vehicles a lot of my first tour that i did with with the sbs was something it was it's like a call of duty game it was fucking fantastic everything i thought that what it should have been and more you know my first job it's it's one of those jobs that gets put up and framed on the sergeant's mess it was that good and mm -hmm. i remember coming off that first job like holy fuck that was sensational and like, the older lads like me they're not all like that <laughs> that was the fucking perla you know but i had a good six months there it was all strike tour it was fucking amazing it absolutely loved it and then some other tours off the back of that and then another tour you know in kabul which was amazing again for myself personally and you know doing all that sort of stuff and I had just a, a, an amazing, amazing career within within UKSF. Yeah, of course, yeah. mate. Of course, anybody who says they don't miss it is, is fucking lying. You know, you there's certain elements of that stuff, but it was, ne it, but that was the five percent. It wasn't wasn't always like that. You yeah. know, there's always elements of waiting around, hurry up and wait on the bus, off the bus, and you know, admin and other stuff. But um, you know, the fun stuff, of course. You know, the the, the, the the parachute stuff, the fucking the diving, as much as you know, as I say, that lads are black liar. But you know that <laughs> element. I love how it was different. It was with your fucking mates every day, like brotherhood. You know, it was amazing. And when you were out doing the job, playing a game, you know, it was fucking amazing. You know what a rush. You know, try and try and replicate that anywhere in life, and uh, and you'll fucking struggle. So it was, yeah, really Nerf good. Nerf wars, really good. grenade HQ. We we'll get it. But I think. The, the main element that I took from it, it was, for me personally, the best job in the world. The best fucking job that I could do and, and that I wanted, and it, it fed everything. But it was also a very slight, was a very selfish job. You know, and I, I had a marriage. It, 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 it destroyed that first marriage, partly, not only the, the only reason, you know. Um, and then it, for me, it, I got to a point where I... I ticked a lot of boxes and I'd done such a lot in that 10 years and yeah. it got to a stage and I met my new Mrs. Ruby and kids and I was just kind of, what am I doing? You know, I'm at this sergeant level and my next kind of progression now within, within the SBS or career wise, I'm moving slowly further away to some degree to the pointy end, you know, and it, which is fine. But, you know, I thought it's probably time to kind of, you know, I make the decision myself and, and Louis as well, my best mate, you know, yeah, co-founder yeah, yeah. through dark. He was, being medically discharged at the time, similar sort of, we were both at 40 Commando together in so the Marines. Excess beardage. Yes. It just grew beyond just, control it, and it just it couldn't was too keep big. It. His neck issues. Yeah, too and, much drag. Yeah, it was his massive shoulders, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, he was getting medically discharged for his back and at that stage I started saying, well look, I'm, I'm at my half pension point, 12 year, 13 year point. And I think I'm ready to fucking close the book, you know, and, and look to other opportunities. I was 33 at the time. Um, so I was like, you know, there's still, still life in the old dark, in the young dark. And I, and I thought I could, I've got enough time here to f refocus on something else and give it as much energy and effort as I did to the service. Yeah. So put the notice in, which I think surprised quite a few people because I was, you know, I was doing quite well in my career, um, sort of finished as the chief sniper instructor. And, um, you know, I'd kind of, I was happy. I was content. And I thought, well, let's just park it and move on. And so me and Louis probably was all fucking plans are formulated in the boozer probably fucking seven pints deep by this stage started looking at talking about things that we could do and then you, you know the natural transition for us is to move into into security work into you know quite well paid mm -hmm. um cp work or close protection sorry or bodyguard work and those options are on the table you know and and we certainly did a little bit of that as we left but we started talking about what we could do and to go back to a point you made towards the beginning about you know, making your own clothes. And, and I think within the military, you're always fucking about with your own clothes and tweaking and changing. And especially as a sniper, there's, 
I remember sort of getting the issued camouflage trousers and, and, and tops and we were cutting old bits of tent off to the canvas and mm-hmm. sewing it onto the front of your pants, onto the back to make it more robust, make it more fit for purpose, i.e. crawling through sort of, sort of gorse bushes. Or piss. Yeah, or piss. Um, I forgot to tell that story, but that lad anyway, he was on the hills and he fucking failed. Yeah, cheers. Oh, annoying. Watch yeah, him. karma. <laughs> but he's since passed, bless him. But... Um, you know, like things like cutting the tops of your Arctic socks off and stitching them on mountain training or in winter, going out to Norway, doing no- like Norway training and always upskilling your kit and just thinking, fuck, why have they done this? Why have they done that? And then that, that happens quite a lot in the general military, i.e. the Marines, because the kit's all right, but it has to fit everyone. has to fucking fit everybody. Yeah. You then go into... Into, into special forces and, you know, we get all the best kit and equipment, you know, from wep- weapons, optics, helmet, everything. I've got most of it, yeah. Yeah, no, you've seen it. <laughs> and, and the clothing as well, you know, good stuff. But again, it was always pulling and pushing and why the fuck have they done this? Why is the zip here and why is this? And, you know, we, I think we were parachuting at the time out in, in America and, you know, jumping out and fucking psh, zips going, you know, failures. And it's fucking, can be a nose when you're jumping. You know, yes. Zips in it's your face. Irritating. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> Why is this happening? And it wasn't cheap kit. It was good kit. Mm. You know, I won't name any names, but um, at that stage, we've always been into our kit, me and Louis, and kit pesting and stuff. And there's kit pests, even within the kit pests, you know, it's like that stage of, of nerdy, if you will. And we were certainly on that nerd scale and kind of always took pride in our appearance. And, and, and I think from there, we kind of started talking about clothing and, and you know, naively looking back, you know, fuck it now, just thinking, can't be that hard, can it? We'll just fucking make some clothing. And yeah. How hard can it be? Uh, yeah, <laughs> never mind the detail, let's just think about a cool logo. You know, like, fucking hell, idiots. So we were still serving at the time, Lou was just getting ready to leave and Louis got his balls in his hand and he was like, fuck it, I'm going to go to Guangzhou, China. There's a massive, I don't know if you've been over there or Guangzhou. or Not recently, you know, no. It's the world's biggest trade show. Uh, it, from textiles to manufacturers, and Lou was like, I'm just going to tuck myself in over there and put, the, fe- in. put the feelers out. <laughs> <as you do." laughs> so he said he turned up to this place and he was messaging, ringing me, went, hey, anyway, he was like, holy shit, this place is massive. Like, I can't get around it, it it's huge. Um, so he's running around, and he's sending me photos, we're getting excited, and these guys could maybe make this and that, and I've got this contact for this, and clothing and bits and pieces. I've got a manufacturer, but I meet a few manufacturers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we come back and then we start sort of putting a bit more meat around the bones about the business. And, you know, I think one of the transferable skills for us as centre especially was kind of utilising that military mindset yeah. and also the planning, the strategy. You know, we've all done sort of orders processes before and, and been through every, you know, the most likely course of action, most dangerous, you know, and what is this? What is that? What is this? We're quite diligent with all that stuff. But... You know, we started down the route of, well, everybody gets their shit made in China. Let's get some samples. We got some samples back and they were pure comedy. <laughs> fuck it. Even short on me. We're like, fuck it. Oh, just genius. And go through this process. And at this stage, we had a, a good friend of ours, um, Steve Clark, who's um, first and foremost a friend, but also the founding investor. You know, he kind of pulled us in one day. I think he heard us at the pub again, gobbing off about this fucking brand that we were going to do. And, you know, he was like, well, let's have a listen. You know, come back to me tomorrow when we're semi-sober and we'll talk about, you know, businesses. And that's what I do. And so we kind of went back the next day and very quickly, like a PowerPoint presentation. And like, this is the idea, the scope. And we think there's a bit of a gap here between kind of super functional performance outerwear, you know, everything from a down summit suit right down to sort of, you know, athleisure wear and, and everything in between and, you know, waterproof coats and, and, and um, down jackets, et cetera, et cetera. And we think it could be like this, kind of cool and look like this, but also be like this and appeal to these people mm-hmm. and this demographic. And he was like, Fuck, I think you might have something here, you know, it's just, and, and first and foremost, and you know this as well, you know, being, working around people, but there's, you know, I think just investing in people and ideas is, yeah. is, is probably the main thing. And we can work out the detail and the business stuff separately to that. So off we set, he set us up in a little office space uh, in Poole, just me and Louis, a little corner office. And, we start making more contacts. Obviously, the fucking um, the China thing's not working. Uh, we meet a British designer, Jeff Griffin, helps us out, uh, flies us over to Italy, introduces us to a factory, fantastic factory over in Italy that we're still working with today. A really nice family-run business, growing, you know, about 40, 50 staff, really, really high-end. And they can do everything there as well. They do it the Italian way, but it, we love it. Now, the issues with that is economies of scale, you yeah. know, there's everything else that come, kind of, the, the, the positives, quality, the negatives as a startup, you know, we're competing Cost. with, Mon- they've got Montclair and, and Chanel Fendi ski range within their 
you know, and, and Woolrich and some big hitters, and they're like, you've got what? You want to do how many jack? Ten, just 10 jack? No, fuck off. Mm. But they were really good with us, you know. From the very start, they've helped us out, and it's been amazing, you know. Um, to then look back sort of three, three and a half years where we started with samples and kind of where we are now, it's, you know, it's incredible, really. It's such a, a relatively short period of time. Mm. So corner of office, we then top floor office, we start taking over the next office now we're getting more stuff and you know very quickly and there's all the twists and turns of business and fuck we fuck this up and you it's know hard, and yeah. shit what about this and making those decisions on the hoof and you're dynamic which is good you can make quick decisions but you know there's probably a bit of naivety as that as well and a bit of want to do it like this and you know me and louis just fucking just going for it really just just gung-ho and fucking shooting from the hip and flying out to italy and sampling and one of the beauties, I think, of Through Dark and, and and its success so far is has been myself and Louis, you know, being the co-founders, having a strong brand and having a, a unique and um, uh, I think for me that it's it's what's the word I'm looking for. Um, you like you like the the clothing version very often. I think of what we do. Where yeah. you said if it looks like a really niche audience but actually it's a massive niche and it's authentic as well it mate. is really For authentic us, a lot of yeah. brands i find <laughs> scrabble around trying to create a story or trying yeah. to create a brand you just go out and tell the truth we did the other we did it the other way around like how can we look at the story and everybody we spoke through from other investors were like fucking yeah this you've got a really cool story and you know from door kicking to fabric pulling we coined that you know quite a bit and interestingly you know i think we get in the factory, the stuff's happening and we're still with Jeff as well. And Jeff was great, but we were kind of getting steered down the fashion route. We wanted, we had this idea. It can't be that. Yeah. It needs to look cool as fuck, but yeah. first and foremost function over fashion. And so we kind of, once we understood the processes, sort of Jeff was carrying on with his stuff. And then we kind of carried on our own really at that stage. And those first two, three years, you're just in the trenches, you know, you're fighting fires, you know, you're doing a bit of everything. I think we joked earlier, didn't we about, you know, uh, can I speak to the fucking customer service team? Yeah. One moment. <laughs> Yeah, Hello, mate. Yeah, how are you doing? <laughs> you know, those kind of stories. And you've got to go through that process and that pain and that, you know, understand every inch of the business. And, you know, we we naturally kind of found our own swim lanes, myself and Louis. Uh, Louis, generally speaking, more super diligent, more diligent than I am. Really good at the, the, the fact for that. I know the factory side of it, you know. Yeah. And but Louis hates people, so he didn't really like dealing with people. So <laughs> I, he's not here I would, yeah. So I would. He'd <laughs> have got a pasta if he in. was. Bastard. I know, mate. I know, but um, but it kind of worked. We kind of naturally found out, and we'd obviously cross over as well and check each other off and and do everything else. But the design, so the the, the development, the testing, um, all that stuff was done by us. We'd get the designs and we'd put them on and we'd you know, cruise up Scotland or mm. abroad and we'd test the gear ourselves and we'd, and we'd sort of record this stuff through social media, which we were running at the time. Mm. Uh, you know, our history within Special Forces, you can't have social media personally. So we had to learn that on the hoof as well. And This is the bit I find the most fascinating. You've gone from being completely anonymous yeah. to now kind of being a public figure. Yeah, yeah. Just well, like talk about doing it. Well, sort I think of, we did it. You know, the sticking I want to your say head 360, above. but that'll bring you back around to the start again. Yeah. So I'm going to change that to 180. Sticking your head better. above the parapet, isn't there? And there's yeah. fucking sticking your head above the. And I think with through that, we we set up um, the Instagram, and initially we had the blurred faces, which kind of worked as well in our favour. And after a while, we were speaking to branding agencies and other people and photographers, and they were like, "Look, lads, you can't keep this up." And, and also, you are the brand. People want to see who you are. They want to know who you are. They they kind of want to make that bridge, that gap, and that yeah. connection. So we sort of set up our own. Pr um, personal Instagrams and run them alongside, which has worked really well. It kind of, I think, it again bleeds into the authenticity side of, of mm -hmm. Through Dark, and we kind of move through that and and the brand. And at that stage, we got Matt Hardy on as well. You know, um, a creative director and photographer. You know, literally bumped into him in in, in, a, in a local coffee shop. His photography's next level. You know, and he's he was moving away. And from, he's got the stance. He's got the stance. As in, like he takes. He's got a great beard down. as well. He's got an amazing beard. He's got him out bearded, and he makes fair. a bloody good sandwich. First oh, and foremost, I'll, I'll, yeah, and as a barista, chef. But you know, for us it, at that stage, it was up in our game. It was me and Louis taking photos. Did he ever get a day and, off? I know. So. Oh, man, no. Come on, no. Never yeah, no, get a day off. Yeah, fuck him. No, exactly. But um, you know, so that next level there, and it, for us, we're still a lean, lean workforce now, maybe twelve people, but we're kind of. Little bit shit at a lot of things, probably like SF operators. You're very. I think it's a bit like you. I was like, I'm just thinking, I've got no, right, no, but well, you kind of pick <laughs> up a lot of stuff, and you yeah. have to, you have to do that. I think you have to kind of. We can't just bring in a one trick pony. You know, we didn't a could afford it, but also we needed gaps 
fucking fill in. We need somebody that can take the photos, but also sort the website out. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I didn't have a clue with that stuff. Where Matt you know came what, into though? his element. And, this and is the best bit of business. And took that out. Yeah, exactly. This is the me. best. This is the best bit. I think the size of where you are now, definitely. I think that for Grenade, that was probably our best bet. When you get to, around those people and you've got. Everyone's doing a bit of everything. Yeah, it's and it's fun, mate. And it it's... is, yeah. As you get, there's like 83 of us now. And as you get to that bit where everyone's got like a proper job. I've got like a proper job now. Yeah. Board meetings yeah. and everything. Yeah, I've got yeah, five yeah. board meetings this month. Did, you, more did, did like... you ever get to a stage where, do you know all of you? Or do you get to a stage where you walk in one day and go, who the fuck is that guy? All the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially over the last 18 months. So because people are coming in and going, oh, hello, we've just started. No, I've been here a year. Whoops. Yeah. And people are saying to me, what do you do? And I was like, that's a good question. That's okay, brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, no, but yeah. I think, so, you know, those first couple of years, you're in the trenches, but it's brilliant. You know, it's stressful. It's you're working all hours. You're doing everything and anything that you can. You literally are putting out fires and, but we're growing and it's working and it, the Instagram's getting better. Matt's on board helping out. Everything, we're, we're now working we, his days off. Yeah. We're now fucking getting more, more stuff done and it's gaining traction and more followers. And, and don't get me wrong. A lot of our success is due to our network and people that have helped us out. Foxy, yeah. you know, Nims, all these people that had a huge profile that were helping us out. You know, we haven't paid a penny for any of that. They're yeah. just being fucking good eggs and That's helping us. That's important as well. That's really important. important. That was gaining us kind of, um, I guess free advertising, isn't it? Basically. Yeah. And uh, probably one of the benefits of, of the world we live in right now. And, you know, there's like, influencers and all this shit, but it, you know, it, 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 it has its positives and its negatives, but for us, it really worked. It worked well, you know, it enabled us to get a bigger reach than, you know, probably traditionally you could 10 years ago. So we kind of leaned on, lent on that and we were moving and we, we were making the best of, with what we could at the time and low budgets. And we were knocking it out of the park with other bits and bits and pieces. And, you know, again, that's not to say we didn't fuck up. We had fuck ups with, you know, trying to make things in the UK and we had a, a recall around Christmas of, at the time, it was only maybe two or 300 jumpers, but they all failed. And at that stage in the business, you're fucking yeah, we are now down to 30, 40 grand that we're going to have to suck up. And those sort of pivotal moments of fuck's sake, but you know, you want, you had to do the right thing at the time. And, and, you know, we've always kind of lent on that, you know, integrity and recalling that was the right thing to do at the time. And, and to be honest, it then, it gave, our loyal customer base kind of, um, I guess, a more of a reason to, to, to believe in us and st stick by us. We've got some amazing, you know, customers and VIP customers that just keep coming back and coming back. And, you know, we're super fortunate about that as well. So, you know, big shout out to those guys. But now we're kind of moving out of this, off this That's office. That's not me, by the way. I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. That was oh, gifted. Thanks for the free. Gifted, it was gifted. Yeah. yeah, it was gifted. It's tight than a duck's ass. Yeah, but hashtag we, ad. We, um, we start taking over the top floor of the, of the thing about, eight months to a year ago and it's growing really well. And then, you know, we've got the whiteboard, the strategy, like yeah, it's all working. There's a few tweaks, 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 and then fucking slam. Same as you, pandemic. Fucking, why wasn't that on the whiteboard? But, yeah. um, so we had the opposite effect though. Again, probably more luck than judgment. We just stocked up from Italy. We were fucking heavy on stock and then everything, that, you know, the world imploded and that red ring was around Bergamo and Milan in particular and we couldn't fly. And we then go through this, so, you know, this course now of pandemic and what do we do? And thankfully the UK courier services were still shipping, you know, we could go in and, you know, we had a skeleton crew. I'm talking sort of me and Louis in just picking and packing orders, you know, for what has been, you know, a year and, uh, but we're growing. It's still growing. We're, we kind of moved our focus. Now we've got a, a, like a the team's growing as well. You know, we've got a, a product master with us, Ben, who's kind of now handling factory and product and sample. He's been a fucking godsend. He's taken that, off Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got other people in now picking and packing and doing the sort of day to day stuff, customer service stuff. Keith's doing a cracking job. Oh, we love Keith. Love Keith. Um, so Keith. we're now giving jobs away. And, Only and outranked by Karen. I know, yeah, yeah, I know, but yeah. yeah. Don't, don't get Karen out. <laughs> yeah, never get It's gone bad if Karen's out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, this is now, it's working now and we're growing as well in the pandemic. It's working really well. We've got digital SEO specialists and website and all this kind of stuff. And we're at a position now where growing really well sort of 300 percent the last year and it's like fucking brilliant we can now move to our, a new premises to facilitate the growth and it was kind of holding us back and we probably just head above the water it's time to move right let's make the move we find a really good unit and we sort of fucking threw docked it up and i think i just my only thing was louis was like dealing with everything else you know fucking juggling the you Didn't know you in charge of it today no he, did, he knows better than that <laughs> he was fucking spinning all the plates you know and and managing the move the construction and everything i think because at the time i was away with the show yeah um 
But he was the only thing he asked me to do was like, so I just sort out a little gym. We were in there just to look at the bike and some weights. I was like, not a problem. <laughs> Next thing, everything's fucking built around the gym. He was like, mate, I said a fucking little fucking, uh, but no, we've had a really good fit out. We're super fortunate, you know, we, you know, give it a bit of character. We wanted to create a community for the lads to come in to work with. I think that's super important. Yeah. It's not just, the, you know, it, it, you know, we, we had the idea and it's very, you've been down lines, haven't you? And, and, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's very lines, like downstairs, it's kind of work, work, a gym, container units, you know, showers, toilets, ballroom, and it's all painted black, obviously, and then walk up the stairs and it's, um, the walls are kind of covered in our memorabilia and photos and stuff. And, and then in the office area upstairs, it's kind of office, but again, more gizzits and, and stuff. Just, I think it's um, so that constant probably reminder that, you know, of, of the background and who we are and everything else and, and for us and for the lads and, and for the brand as well. well that's, it, that's easily forgotten. <laughs> yeah. That's very easily forgotten, yeah. that stuff. So you must never, ever forget that. Because um, that, yeah, that's, that heritage is critical. Yeah, so I think and it's... a lot of people don't understand this. No. That's critical. No, so I think it's, you know, that move happened, I think, in September uh, last year. So fucking, where's that time gone? And, you know, we're still doing bits and pieces now to it, but it's now enabling the growth, you know. We're being a little bit more... Um, I say, well, we're being a bit braver now with ordering and quantities. We're scaling up. We're kind of more budget towards, you know, paid and advertising SEO and a new website and everything else, you know, but it, those economies of scale and everything that we spoke about at the, at the start, it's difficult. You've kind of got to run that course, haven't you? You've got yeah. To, well, you keep targeting me. Trenches, so, yeah, your algorithm keeps targeting me because I am your perfect consumer because <laughs> yeah. I'm like military nerd yeah. and love all this stuff. I'm like, no, just keep clicking on it. It's cost you eight pence. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah, keep clicking on it's it. Yeah. Of you, yeah. It cost him two quid. Lovely. And then just delete. Yeah, so it's um, again just yeah very briefly kind of three years, three and a half years into, into three life, but it's doing really well. We're you know super fortunate. We've got fucking amazing people that work for you know with us, not for us. You know we're in every day. There's a really good sort of um, energy about the place, and it, it it's hard, isn't it? You probably know to try and find people that want to work oh, for your. Thing. Your vision and your thing. dream, and, yeah. and it's not for everybody, you know. We've had sort of, you know, the people that came in and Jay, and you know, he got pulled out in, in other directions, and you know, to have loyal people like that, and I think you know, it's it, it's, it's fucking super fortunate and lucky. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, finding people again that, like you said, share your vision. Yeah. Finding mini versions of you, really. Mini than me. I know. Well, yeah, not in height. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, yeah, just like us, like mini me's. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's almost impossible, and and I think that probably almost comes down to luck. Yeah. I think if you can meet. The right people at the right time, yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably the best thing you'll ever do with that shadow of a doubt. Yeah. And how did it? And then how did um, Who Dares Wins come about? Um, Speaking of which, actually, while you have a drink, um, yeah. you know, I said I just bought a boat. You know, I've come up with a name for it. I've been thinking about a name for Go ages. On. Who Dares Swims? Yes, <laughs> I thought it was quite good. Nice. I get it. it's brilliant, isn't it's it? Nice, yeah. Yeah, pull up to the marine. Everyone's going to think, what a twat. <laughs> Thanks, all right. Who Dares Swims? Brilliant, brilliant. But um, so the show, mate. Fuck. Um, Right, how long have we got? Right, so the first time... <laughs> as long came, as you want now, because the, the longer you talk, we can just turn this into, like I said, a 12-parter. Oh, pretty, yeah, it's a mini-episode. <laughs> um, so I think the first time this came around, not this episode, so episode, what would it be? Episode, um, or season, sorry, five. Uh, we were speaking to the casting crew um, when we were back in the office, top floor. And initially it was a conversation based around clothing and equipment. So... Foxy was obviously wearing our stuff, a few of the other guys, and they sort of asked Foxy, and Foxy was like, look, we should get this stuff in. We spoke to the wardrobe department, wardrobe department rings us, hi, I've been putting, you know, put in contact with you guys, understand you do kind of performance out of wear. And then they let, tried to kind of, they let it down that, well, we need this, this, base layers, this and this and this, but it's for the recruits. So straight away I was kind of, ooh, ooh pumping the brakes a bit. And I said, well, what will that look like, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it come down to, in the end, not enough time. When do you need it? Yesterday. Fucking classic. Look, we, yeah. and also that's not what we do. They said, well, we just it didn't need to be it didn't need to be good gear. It just needs to be cheap and cheap. Oh Listen, yeah, that's not us. Yeah, right. there you go. There that's you go. sort of the end of the conversation, really. And we can't deliver in time, so you know, it, 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 sort of crack on. And also, if we were going to get anybody, we wanted the instructors, obviously, because that you know, it's sort of better for the brand. But because they're better. The phone was down. That was it. Then it was kind of that was an interesting conversation. Anyway, we're kind of carrying on with my Keith duties. And the uh, phone went again about five minutes later. It's the casting people. Would you be interested in potentially coming on? We've got this option uh, opportunity to be a mole. So undercover, blah, 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 and then into a DS. And I was like, fuck off, not a chance. Like, no thanks. And, and Jay's in the office as well, and Louie, and the other Matt, and we're all fucking, nah, fucking leave it. Put the phone down, we're fucking having a giggle about it. And I was kind of like, are we being really stupid? 
Like, yes. Like, fuck, this could be a really good PR opportunity for Through Dark. So we start having a little bit of a chat inside, like, you do it. I ain't fucking doing it. You do it. Like, I ain't fucking, like, you do it. Like, I've got to fucking business. Make it be perfect for you. You'd be great. And so we have that kind of laugh and jokes. And in the end, we all went Did Matt it. step up? Yeah, Matt, yeah. Lofty, Lofty Wiseman. <laughs> so in the end, um, we all go for it. We said, look, why don't we all go through the process? It's good anyway to do these things, I think, f- f- for you, for your own personal development, go through interview processes and bits and pieces. And they're speaking to other people as well, you know, unbeknown to us, but known to us through the connections. They're also speaking to these guys, these guys. And in the end, it gets down to me and Jay. And then we're both in London. And, you know, it was a, obviously Jay's, say yes, I'm SBS and um, he's obviously better looking. Uh, I'm harder. But then, so it's, they're playing it off. And in the end, I can remember speaking to the guys. And I said, look, if, I didn't really want to do it, if I'm honest. I, I had the element of, I don't want to stick my head above. And yeah, to be honest, yeah. Jay would be great. And, you know, me and Louis are doing the, the lion's share of the work work back at Through Dark in terms of the day to day. And, you know, we're, we, we're kind of entwined in Through Dark, whereas Jay's, you know, running the expedition site. So it would be perfect for him, perfect for the brand, just be the face. So, Thankfully, they, they they picked Jay and off he went. He did the show and all great, came back, and then he fucked off to be a racing car driver. The rest is history. But I think um, we had that element there of, of riding that wave for a little bit with Jay, and we saw the success of it. We saw the success through website and traffic and sales and, and, and the brand awareness. But, you know, Jay's his own man, he's a free spirit, and, and he was getting opportunities and being tickled and had a great opportunity to go race cars, and who wouldn't want to do that? And we had the fucking grown-up conversation, look, can I do that but still do this? Not really, it's not really going to work. Yeah. You know, how do you see that fitting? And, um, you know, there's a few options on the tables, and in the end it was decided that, you know, he'd go off and, and kind of crack on with that stuff, fair dues. So bit of, left a bit of a shit gap, to be honest. Now we're picking up that stuff, cracking on, and then... Fast forward now. I mean, the show kind of takes six six months to a year before it's out, and then it came around again. Phone call. Psh, I it's such and such from you know, Minnow Films. Would you be interested in being a mole? It was like, what? We're going to do it again? What, what, the same? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking hell. Uh, we have the top again. Fucking no. Fuck off. And I think I said no about three or four times. Like, no. No, not really. Look at what it's done here, and fuck it, we've already done it. I think you're kicking a can down the road, and. Again, a couple of weeks passed, and the guy, the, one of the producers, was like, "Look, why don't you do the process? Go through the process, and you can always turn the tap off at the last minute." You know what I mean? Literally, day before filming, bit of a cunty thing to do, but you could do it. So I was like, "Yeah, okay, let's." So let's that sounds like me. Yeah, let's I can do that. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can, I can let everyone down. I at can the last let minute. everyone down last minute. But <laughs> so we went through the process again, and again, there's other people going for it, and in the end, it, it came round, and it came round to me, um, and you know, again, conversation. It's just not just you. You know, you're not make, just making a decision on you. It's a decision on through dark. It's a decision on Louis. You know, he's got to pick up the slack while I'm away. Yeah, and we're moving unit not as well. Difficult and, to be fair, but you know, and uh, you know, and big up to Louis for, for for kind of again. He's now spinning his plates, and now I've just thrown him a load of other plates to spin while I'm away. And you know, so he gave us the green light, and ultimately it was my decision. But you know, it was a decision made for through dark for the greater good yeah. from a PR perspective. And look, we can sit here all day and. I made my bed, I'll fucking lie in it. I made that decision and I think I made it for the right reasons. Um, didn't necessarily want to do it, didn't want to do it for the, uh, it's not fame, is it? Fucking, you know what I mean? It's Instagram, it's all that bollocks. I don't like all that stuff and I'd, I'd like to think I'm quite authentic at the moment through my channels. I'm, you know, it, it is what it is, but it was more about through dark. It was about highlighting me and Louis, you know, uh, and the brand. Uh, and um, that's what we used it for. And look, it's not the done thing, is it? You know, let's be honest, there's, when you join the military and then you move into the special forces world, you know, there's a code, there's the, you know, the things that you do there and, and things that you don't do. And, it, and it's, it, it's not the done thing, you know, it's not what you do, but I think the times have changed. I think we live in a different world now. Um, yeah. I think when you're in that world as well, it's, it, you're in a, in an echo chamber of, of this and that. And, I think people, you are blinded by that and that alone. I think, you know, it takes over your life. It consumes you and people's fucking, to be honest, I've had no shit. I've had no shitty messages or no shitty emails. I've not. I'm probably making, it's it's I'm making shit you. up in no, my head. Loads. Probably, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm probably making shit up in my head. I don't know, but there's probably people on that, that, that think I'm out of line. But if they think that, they've certainly not 
sort of voiced it to me, but you know, it is what do it is. You know what? Honestly, I know quite a lot of people that you know, and that genuinely, I don't think they do. I think a lot of people as well, if they had the opportunity to yeah. do it, they'd all do the same. Yeah, I think so. And it's, I think there's, a, I think how you conduct yourself, yeah, is really important. I think yeah. it's not what you do; it's how you do. Yeah, it. and I think you've done it brilliantly. Oh, thank you, mate. I think it's. I think that was my worry when you, if I saw somebody do it, you know, and I have seen people do it, I just all you'd hope is that they fly the flag and that they represent. Yeah. Who who they are, who we are, who the service is and everything that they stand for. You don't want a wet blanket, but there's not like many wet blankets that, you know, let's have yeah. it in the, in the service, but you want it just to be the right people. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully I've kind of, you know, I've, I've, I've done that, but um, yeah. So going to put you on the spot in terms of good or bad yeah. at Middleton then. <laughs> Mate, so, I... Um, just because people either love him or hate him. Yeah, it's like more my... I, I love Ant. I've got a really good friendship with Ant Middleton. I always have. Like I remember my first uh, introduction to Ant. I was in eight nine seven troop. He was in the troop behind me, eight nine eight, but we're in the same block in the Marines. So we're two weeks apart of training. But he was a para before, so he turns up as a recruit. But he's got his wings on. And everyone's like, who the fuck's this guy? You know. Uh, but he's always been Ant Middleton. He's not. He's not putting on a show. Yeah, he's not, I believe that. He's not different now to what he was back then. And we joined the Marines. We we're in the same company, Bravo Company together. You know, me and Louis and Ant. We're all in the same company, and he's always been you know, larger than life, wears his heart on his sleeve, very, very good at his job. Like, he's in the top 1%, I would say, of the job, you know, mm. within the operators. If you're fucking picking your five-a-side team, he'd be on there, you know, yeah. very, very competent. Now that I've been out and I've seen, and I've been exposed to, you know, the real world and business and, and the TV stuff now, um... I think when you're in, there's that echo chamber again and other people, oh, he's done this, he's, you know, he shouldn't be doing that, shouldn't have said this. And it's not a fucking game. When I'm with Ant, I saw his side, his version of it, mm. you know, and it's, you've got, I think you've got to understand that. You've got to, you know, don't judge a man until you've walked a fucking few miles in his shoes. And I could see what he was doing and he's played it fucking brilliantly, you know, and it's hard to be the chief instructor of that course, you know, and he steps up to the plate time and time again. And, I think probably from the outside looking in, from the show's perspective, you think, oh, it's, it's a show, isn't it? It's like Break Off. And it's all one hit. It's the, the show is built around the instructors delivering a course that just happens to be getting filmed. So mm. the recruits are getting beasted. They're immersed in it. They are physically and mentally immersed in that show and or in that experience, should I say. And the, the cameras are almost um, second to, secondary to that. You don't really, you notice that they're there, but you don't. And... And plays that that role really well. There's no second hits. There's no like sh- start making. You, and can you do that again? You fuck that up, or you you mm. dropped a bollock there, and it's just delivered perfectly. And just fucking, um, that takes a lot of doing. And I don't care yeah. who you are, or people can say I could do that. I could I could do what you can do. And there's a lot of that shit, man. A lot of the time, it stems from a bad place. If people are really honest with themselves, they're jealous of how well he's done. Uh, he's yeah, made well, a I real big a success of, that, of especially himself. Especially in the military. It's fucking green-eyed monster, mate. Yeah. Um, you know, it is it is what it is. We, we live by the sword, we die by it. And, you know, we've all made mistakes. Fucking hell, I'm not going to sit here and say I, I'm perfect and I've not made mistakes or shouldn't have said something or done something that I haven't done. And absolutely not. But I think people that do that, I think there's an element... It, I don't like that. And I don't like that trait in people to look and throw stones and to fucking bark at other people. Who gives a fuck? You know, it's not impacting them personally. Mm. And if it is, it's it's, it's probably a, an issue with yourself. Do you know what I mean? And how you look outwardly to the world and other people. Oh, people are so insecure. And let's flip it around the other way for Anne. He's he's created a lot of opportunity for SF and ex-SF guys. Whether they like to admit it or not, he's come out. He's the first guy to do that. First guy from this new era to write books, mm. to do book tours. You know, he's opened up a world now and an opportunity for other people. You know, that uh, I think... Sometimes just step back from the coal fire and, and have a look and, and be thankful and, and practice a bit of gratitude in that respect. And so, you know, that's my stance on Ant. You know, I like Ant. And yes, he can say stuff that's fucking, you know, taboo. And there's other stuff that you're like, you cringe. And oh, mate, oh. But I know why he's doing it. And he'll yeah. post, mate. And 
he'll set people up on Twitter and he'll, I'm sat, he's giggling and I'll sit next to him and he'll go, he'll go, fucking mate, wait for this, wait for <laughs> this. People are going to bite. And he fucking presses send and he's fucking literally in hysterics. And then people are on there, they're taking everything so seriously. I can't believe you said, and he's like, fuck, you know, it just gets reaction. And he's like, it's fucking funny. You know what I mean? I, I, I can't imagine anything worse than being famous. No, I, I really can't, especially yeah. when people are, again, it's, you're so polarizing as well. Which judged. unless you're polarizing nowadays, you, nowadays you don't get any traction anyway. Yeah. You've got, it's, the world, the world is so polarized it's with everything. So, so unless you're completely miles one way or the other, it, no, one, no one's interested. It's malice toast, yeah. isn't it, mate? No, You've got to be a bit crackers. It, it, is, it is getting worse. Um, what do you think you'd be doing if it wasn't for Through Dark? I'd be flying space rockets, I think. I listened <clears> to Tim <throat> Peake the other day on, on the High Performance Podcast, and he's, what a fucking story that is. But, um, uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't be flying fucking space rockets. Um, I don't know, mate. I've answered this question before on Instagram and bits and pieces and, and said that probably I might have gone still down. I'll tell you what I, I wanted to do was uh, Fire Brigade. Um, that always interested me. I think I would have done some sort, of, some form of public service, whether it's police, fire brigade, something like that. God help us. Yeah, I know. Fucking <laughs> all right. Leave imagine, that shit to the professionals. Imagine you rock cat in a tree, you rock up. Oh, yeah. Hang on a minute. Fucking catapults. Oh, shit. Perfect. Job yeah. done. I'm just joking. Um, just joking. So, a few quick fire questions. Uh, you're on TV now. What TV shows do you like? Um, I mean, I love, uh, I don't watch kind of normal telly, if that makes sense, or not terrestrial stuff, or the fucking news is a load of bollocks as well, isn't it? Got a lot to answer for the media. I think for us, it's normally, it's finding stuff as well that you can watch with the missus, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. I want, but I want to watch this shit. I'll be fucking, we're not watching that. So um, it's like um, Netflix documentaries and bits yeah. and pieces and or a series. I love a good fucking series and stuff. So uh, all sorts, mate, really. It was in Clarkson's Farm. Uh, no, so Matt Watch was talking about Clarkson's that. Farm. Well, this is the thing. That. So here, back to my little original point. There, I got it up the other day. Looked at the message. You know, fucking <laughs> oh, no, get your head that. down. Watching Love Island. No, I should enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, right, best war film you've ever seen. I love a war film, especially oh, on a Sunday mate, afternoon. Uh, you can go modern, or you can go mate, classic. Fucking Saving Private Ryan. I think because when it came out at the time and everything else, and and the way that it was shot, that was incredible, it wasn't it? When it first came out, absolutely. Fucking incredible, blew my mind, you know. Uh, and you could just imagine it was quite raw, wasn't it? And then a friend of mine supplied all the vehicles for that film. If ever you want to go really? and see some did he vehicles, do, I told you what else I like as well. Fury, yeah. So uh, did he do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, anything like that. Nineteen fourteen was great as well, but from for a different reason with the way that it was the cin cinematography. Is that right? Thing? Yeah, the way that it was yeah, shot yeah, yeah. was yeah. was was amazing. Uh, but I mean, I've seen every fucking war film under the, under the, under the sun. I, mate, I, I was going to go. Um, we were soldiers. Yes. Yeah. Black Hawk Down. Oh, me, amazing. Yeah. They're the only two to make. Or old school. I've got Battle of the Bulge, <laughs> Kelly's Heroes. You, you probably weren't bored. Kelly's Heroes, a classic. Cockle that's Shell Heroes, Cockle obviously. Shell. No, that's too old school. Yeah. My dad loves that, though, to be yeah. fair. Um, scariest thing you've ever done? Um, I think it's... Well, mate, the fucking life we've led doing stuff every day was you're, you're living life on the eraser's edge, aren't you, as we like to say. But I've got too many stories of of funny, not funny stories of moments of almost Pulp Fiction where bah, 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 and bursts of looking at you, mate, like, <laughs> fucking hell, ding, 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 all that stuff. But um, that to having, I don't know, um, moments of, you know, being involved with uh, improvised explosive devices, detonating uh, roadside bombs, being in vehicles, being blown up, and that's pretty fucking... But we've got quite a dark humour in the military, as you, most people have. Yeah. You know, most stuff is just oh, quite often, that was a close one, wasn't it? You know, but there's a loads of that stuff. There's lots of running into the fucking firefights, and, but it excites me. I, I'll be honest, you know, I, I'm kind of a bit of a, an adrenaline junkie. I think I'm probably numbed to it now to some extent. Not a lot gets me excited, but certainly oh, loads here. of stuff that I've been, I've been in moments of, you know, probably where I potentially should have been you know more scared than I was I tell you what uh, one story is the uh, is diving mate so military or, or combat swimming or diving it's like most stuff the military just knock the fucking fun out of everything yeah parachuting that way that'd be great <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oxygen yeah, all your kit <laughs> With a dog into Norway, <laughs> fucking what the fuck? <laughs> Jump out, you're in a fucking in a world of pain, and then diving's another one. You're fucking diving, let's go fucking no, 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 fucking rebreather <laughs> on two meters and fucking swim for your life in the and you know, but it's all just um, a method for getting to target. But I've had instances of near drowning experiences, 
quite a few times within you're the scared SPS. of anything I make numb to it I think yeah. numb to it and 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 just you aware quite of it sc- scary aware of it yeah and I think you it's experience, isn't it? I used to think being hard was doing it or thinking or as a way that you projected yourself, but it's actually experience, isn't it, that kind of develop who you are. And I've been in off the North Sea diving, you know, and around the big oil, uh, offshore energy installations and oil rigs, the big stanchion legs, and you're just, it's like being in a fucking washing machine of just being, I remember just kind of buddying up. You always have a swim buddy you're attached to your fucking dive buddy and got all your full operational kit on and you're at night fucking North Sea freezing, big fucking swells, ripping tide, and you you got the rope on you and you're going towards a big stanchion leg, which is fucking about as big as this room, uh, round, and uh, obviously trying to get access onto the spider deck. So you'll give it, as you get close, you give the old, you swim that way, you swim this way, break away, and you, the only thing sort of connecting you and holding you together is this bit of climbing rope, essentially. So you go around the, around the leg and then you whoosh, meet at the other end and it's fucking whoosh, big washing machine. I remember... All your kit on, and the other lads are trying to fucking get the grappling hooks all onto the um, spider deck. Big swells, and you magnet in on as well to the legs while this is all being sorted out. And then you've got to de-rig your kit, so you've got to come off gas, uh, attach it to a, certain things you've got to do, attach it to what your kit, blah, blah blah blah, before you finally break out the water and start the 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 climb with the you know caving ladders. Yeah, little horrible tight caving ladders with all full operational kit on it's a fucking man test but i remember this one stage of being around in the washing machine and i was with goz one of our guys um who was a senior team leader at the time and you know cool as a cucumber i remember i was flapping i was under the water giving it full <laughs> eyes were on stalks like i do not feel in control right now i do not feel comfortable and it was uh, a stage of <laughs> smashing into each other and um i remember looking at him and he just give it. He was giving it the old one of those, like kind of arms under a hair, like this. Just and he was just rolling with it and looking with it. And I could tell he was smiling, and he was just giving it the old one of them to me. Fucking chill the fuck out, relax. He's probably having a tab, and I just had a moment of fucking. I just I didn't like that feeling of 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 being out of control, of, of not being in control because Nate. I felt about that big. Nature had me, and she was a fucking the sea's a cruel mistress, and she <laughs> yeah. wants to be in it. It was spinning me off, and it actually ended up. T- I was turned round in the end, and I end up choking my, or, or collapsing one of my valves uh, of the rebreather. So rebreather uh, non uh, just recirculates the oxygen yeah. through a through the through the soda lime system. But I remember being over this way and thinking I, have, I need to write back the other way to get my arm out, and it, it cut my airway off. And I was slowly but surely, and the set's not tripping now. I'm not getting oxygen. It's not injecting oxygen, and I'm and I'm thinking, oh fuck, I'm gonna have to cut myself away from my strap that's holding us together, a big tide ripping through. And I am and I remember thinking where, my, where I was, my knife was on my bottom right and I had all my kit on and I'm just boo, slammed around and now I'm, I can't breathe. And I'm trying to reach my knife and I can't fucking reach it. Actually, cause he's trying to, he's trying to get to me. Cause you can see now like, oh shit, he's, he, oh no, he's having a mare. So he's trying to get to me, clamber over and then one last fucking, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on breath hold now. Grab my knife and cut myself away, and I get fucking ripped off by the tide. And there's a safety boat downstream of the I was training scenario uh, at night, and I fucking put my old flashy light on, and there, we use this in our bed. He's always a laugh in it. Yeah. And then uh, it turns out I'm not the only one in the boat at this stage, but they fuck the doctors in there, they drag me out. I'm white as a fucking ghost. They're all, way stars, way. Oh. Fuck, are you alright, mate? <laughs> I fucking nearly died. But, um, My version of this was actually using the toilets at Grenada HQ after Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> horrific. Absolutely yeah, horrific. But, so, mate, there's, you know, and there's times we're jumping out at night with all your kit on. I've had uh, malfunctions on, on um, you know, at fucking 18,000 feet with, you know, where you fucking look up and it's like a walking above your head and fuck. And you, I've had a, you have those moments of almost, I laughed, sort of laughed, uh, you know, and it's got put in a big really sort of vicious sort of um, uh, twists and turns and I'm I'm looking at it thinking fuck you know like oh no I'm going to have to pull I had a moment to like to to think I've got to pull my my reserve here and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I've realised you're the worst person I could ask that question to yeah I know just mate like, yeah. Yeah, just but, no, brilliant yeah, but but I mean, look, we're out of time I've got one more question yeah. one question what's next um, right, so it's it's through dark. There's other stuff bubbling away with me personally, other bits and pieces and opportunities. But with through dark and for through dark, we're in a, an amazing 
situation that we're right now with the brand. It's probably like you said, we're in that golden age, probably without realising it. We'll yeah. look back on these times. You know, the business is doing really well. It's growing really well. We're excited about different projects coming up. So that's either content capture and or products as well. New product releases. We're always looking to expand. It's, it's ski and uh, outerwear. And we're looking at other stuff as well. Desert range and hot weather climate gear, but it's just growing the brand, continuing to grow and, and, and keep everything focused around the quality of the product for mm. us at the moment. And also enjoying the ride, I think, for us and, and as a team as well, and probably expanding the team. And yeah, it's, um, I mean, I mean, life's fucking good. I've got no complaints. All my problems are first world problems. You know, they really are. And I think that's probably the main thing that I got from my time in the military was a quite a, a keen or a unique sense of perspective is, is quite a big one for me. It's, it's, we're all guilty of it. Don't get me wrong. I'll chip into Costa and I've got a fucking, my skinny child latte is lukewarm and I'll go, <laughs> fuck you, fuck you are. Like, oh no, calm down. Did like, you know like, I am? Yeah. yeah so fuck it. Who dares gyms uh, involved in that as well? Yeah. So yeah. who dares gyms is, um, is another guy, Leo, um, ex, ex service guy that I served with as well at the time. He's, uh, an exciting little project for those people that don't know. It's basically, it's like, think Venice beach, muscle beach without the muscles. But but Bournemouth, uh, really good concept. That I know you guys are involved with and, and, and Beaver Fit, and it's a really, really good concept in terms of outdoor um, uh, training and stuff, and a bit of military sort of spin on it as well. Really good setup. If anyone's down there, so I can ch yeah, check out Who Dares Gyms. We're doing some stuff as well with these guys, and sort of um, some guest slots to come down and do some beast things and stuff. But I think it's yeah, it's um, it's a good good concept really. Awesome. Stas, I have absolutely thoroughly enjoyed that because I'm a bit of a military nerd. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, you've done all the stuff that I, I wasn't cool enough to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I just, yeah. Mate, thanks for having me on. I think it's, oh, um, yeah, it's a pleasure. A pleasure. Always good to see you, mate. And, yeah, Fantastic. Wish you all best. Legend. Brilliant. Thank Cheers, you. Mate. Thank awesome. You. Thanks. <laughs> so, guys, that's the end of uh, this last 27 episodes of Paul the Pin <laughs> with Stars from Through Dark. Yeah. I really hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. So, you've been listening to Paul the Pin with me, Alan Barrett. And if you enjoy these as much as we do, then please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you soon.